Hello, I'm Doug Musio. This is City Talk. Three men in a room, Governor Pataki, Assembly Speaker Sheldon Silva, and Senate Minority Leader Joe Bruno, New York State's government, whose dysfunction is by now a cliche. Albany is gridlocked, deadlocked, and sclerotic, in need of major surgeries, including triple bypass. To talk about Albany, its many maladies, and some avenues of reform as Assemblyman Keith Wright of the 70th Assembly District, including Harlem, Hamilton Heights, Morningside Heights, and Manhattanville. Assemblyman Wright has served the district since 1991. Welcome, Keith. Thank you so much, Doug. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, we've got so much to talk about. Let I mean, we've got Albany dysfunction, we've got electoral reform, changes in the police department, the MTA, the death penalty, Rockefeller drug laws. Sure. Let's get to it. In an earlier conversation between us, I jokingly asked you if you were part of the problem of dysfunction in Albany or part of the solution. And you graciously and laughingly said both. Describe Albany and how you see it and how you fit in it. We have problems right now in Albany, uh, especially last year was not uh, a great year to write home about. It, was, uh, not a, it wasn't a good year that, that we were able to get things done on behalf of the people of the state of New York. Yes, I mean, I could probably say as part of the legislature, as an elected member of the New York State Assembly, that I could be, it could be construed that I might be a part of the mm -hmm. problem. Uh, guilty as charged. Okay. Uh, certainly, uh, I've done all that I think that I'm able to do and will try and do more in order to uh, create a more working-like atmosphere up there so that we can truly represent the people that we represent. Describe the, the general atmosphere in Albany. The general atmosphere right now is extremely, uh, not a little bit, but extremely partisan uh, on all ends, on all ends right now. And certainly you have the governor who uh, is is the I guess the head of the uh, head of the of the situation up there, and you have um, Joe Bruno, and you have Shelley Silver, mm -hmm. um, all of whom have great power bases, if you will, and certainly um, then it becomes the legislature against the governor right. sometimes, right. and then the governor uh, thinks that he's being double teamed, and then he will pull rabbits out of his hat to say this is, or he'll, he'll say, he'll take the ball away and say, I'm taking the ball away so no one can play, so to speak. Uh, okay, to a certain extent, it's almost like a, a new game, like where's Pataki? It's a kid's game, yeah, Okay. in a lot of ways. Tuesday's Times reports Pataki vetoes unanimously adopted overhaul of the budget process. That's right. What's going on here? The entire assembly and the entire Senate. That's right. These two rabidly partisan, often antagonistic Absolutely. bodies. Who don't unanimous, always agree. Right. We don't uh, Universally agree. passed this and the governor vetoes it. Right. Number one, yeah. what was right about the legislation and in fact, was there anything well, wrong with it? One of, the, one of the right things about the legislation was that, is that we, right now, the way that the system is, is set up is that we in the legislature are mandated to have our fiscal year to pass our pass our budget and our fiscal year starts on April 1. April Fool's Day. We always April get Fool's, Fool's Day. Day. April you Fool's never Day. deliver. We are we're, and we have not delivered in over 20 years. I know. Now now let's be clear. Go ahead. One, one of the items as part of that reform agenda was that we were going to push the the deadline our fiscal year back I believe to May. Right. To May 1 which would give us another month to to examine the governor's budget which he puts out in January. Now uh, so Will it matter? I mean, you guys go until August well, anyway. Well, and it would have mattered. It okay, would have mattered a bit. And we were also going to uh, have an independent budget office, mm -hmm. which would look at the, the, the revenues, the various revenues that we as a state legislature uh, would be able to And you know the governor ain't going for that He's not one. going for that because he wants it to be his way sure. or no way. Right. So that's why the governor vetoes the budget, uh, vetoes the, the, our reform package simply because it wasn't his way. Now, let me say this, Doug. This has been the most detached, disengaged governor that I have 
ever, ever worked with. Um, he's rarely in Albany. And, uh, he never gives press conferences. And never gives press conferences, but he just seems to... Um, why do, Why isn't he engaged? I have no idea. I mean, this is the way he's. He's. I mean, I don't underestimate right. him. I don't. I don't think anyone should, right. should uh, underestimate him politically. But this guy is. It's just. He's never around. Um, uh, rarely gives press conferences. You. I mean, he's either on the road somewhere. All the things he criticized Mario Cuomo about. Uh, uh, of, of never being around or what have you. This guy is never ever around. And for him, to to veto. The, the one reform package that came out of Albany uh, is, is, is absolutely irresponsible on his part because, it, let's face facts, all of us in Albany are guilty to some degree mm -hmm. of not producing on behalf of the people of New York State. Okay, let me, let, me, let me look at it from another perspective. Let me sort of take the governor's view. Big problem is Shelley Silver, it seems to me, both in terms of his negotiating style and to a certain extent, his persona. I don't think the governor and Shelley get along at all. And Shelley's tactic of waiting till the last minute, I th does it drive everybody nuts? No, we, we have to think. Shelley is the only, when you talk about the three men in the room. Go ahead. And sometimes we have a uh, conglomerate also when you're dealing with the Rockefeller drug laws. Uh, but, but okay, anyway, we'll, three we'll men get in, to that. Three men in a conglomerate. Um, <laughs> But, but, but when you're talking about Shelley, I mean, you really have to look at substance. Substance overrules form mm -hmm. uh, in terms of Shelley. It, his personality does drive the governor crazy. Let's face facts. But Shelley is the only one in that room who is from New York City. Mm -hmm. um, does his style? I mean, St Shelley is not a uh, slap your back kind of guy. Hey, what's going on kind of guy. That's not his style. Never has been. Uh, but, I mean, certainly for the folks in the Democratic conference of the New York State Legislature, most of which is, is made up of the folks from New York City. Mm -hmm. and, and, and during a budget, a pro, very protracted budget um, uh, uh, negotiation, I mean, you're looking at it, we have to deliver some things when we can. Mm -hmm. Take over the years, education. Mm -hmm. if, we had the go if the governor had his way, we wouldn't bring, be bringing any money in back for education for New York City oh. at all. Now, that being said, the, the campaign for fiscal equity situation okay. was absolutely irresponsible on all of our parts, especially the governor, as far as I'm and concerned. And I, I really want, want, want to get to that. In fact, why don't we move to that? We move off. Okay, look, before we move off the budget process, is it going to be overridden, the, the veto? Is I the hope Assembly so. going to do I it? Is the so. Senate going to do I, it? I, I can almost guarantee that the Assembly will do it. Okay. Listen, this, this reform package was formulated by a bipartisan what we call conference committee, mm -hmm. um, which rarely happens in all. And a conference committee is a committee established between members of the Senate and members of the Assembly right. to uh, produce one piece of uniform legislation for that, both houses. Absolutely. And okay. it's done in public in front of reporters, mm -hmm. in front of good government groups, in front of um, anyone who wants and to watch. And doing things in front of anybody in Albany rarely seems seen. to be, excuse me, if, if seen at all, it's, right. it's almost extinct. Rarely, rarely done. Okay. Any future? What else? Let's say that this uh, budget veto gets overridden. What are, what are the other steps of reform that are necessary or likely to come out of the Assembly? Well, or the certainly Senate? there's a bill coming out of, I believe, the Assembly where you have to actually be in your seat in order to vote. <sighs> Uh, 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 which I have no problem with on some members. What about have... reading the bills? Wasn't there a report well, that's advocating that legislative re I mean, honestly, is, are there situations, and as a general, that you guys pass legislation let me, let without me say reading this. it? Well, let me just say this. Okay, Sometimes. In the in, well, and, and that, those, of, those folks that saw Fahrenheit 9-11, I will never forget the line uh, that John Conyers, um, uh, when, when he was being interviewed, and I guess it was Michael Moore said, well, did you read this piece of legislation? And John Conyers said, my son, we can't read any pieces of legislation <laughs> whatsoever. Uh, it's hard okay. to read all pieces. When, you, when you're talking about over 10,000 mm -hmm. bills, mm -hmm. some bills are, I don't know, 15, 20 pages long, written in very, very small um, uh, fonts, if you will. Uh, that's hard to do. But certainly voting uh, on, on, from your seat, I, I have absolutely no problem with. Uh, listen, you have to remember that the Brennan Center described us as the worst legislature in the, in the entire State of the Union. Right. 
Uh, and it's we a have state some of dysfunction. Work, we right. have some work what to else? do. Give we me have more. some work to do. Well, I mean, certainly, um, uh, we, you know, we certainly have to, uh, you know, take some of the lobbyists out of the situation. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, lobbyists are a cottage industry mm -hmm. in Albany uh, right now, um, uh, and we have to take some of the, the money out of the out mm -hmm. of the process. Okay. And uh, we, we have a lot of work to do. Okay. Uh, committee assignments, what have you. Uh, hiring of staff. These are a lot of the things that are running. Okay, let's look at specific items here. You mentioned the, the campaign for fiscal equity. Mm -hmm. To many of us looking at that, that was as close to being totally irresponsible as a legislative body can be, that they didn't act within the 15 months or so that the Court of Appeals gave you guys to come up with what happened? a what? formula. Yeah, no, Go ahead. I, no, I agree. Go ahead. I agree. What I'm happened was harsh, that, that, that you have a lot of... Uh, Listen, let me just tell you what happened. Go ahead. Upstate uh, legislators uh, didn't want to lose any of their money, so to speak. Uh, legislators from the suburbs didn't want to lose any of their money. So it was an uphill battle in order for the legislature uh, to come up with it, to formulate a fiscal formula uh, that would benefit New York City mm -hmm. alone. Which Let's was back, the mandate of the court. Which was the mandate of the court, absolutely. Uh, so you have folks from Westchester uh, on both sides of the aisle. Let's right. face fact, the Republican Senate didn't want to do this. Right. The governor did not want to do this. And he, he actually showed how, why he did, how he didn't want to do it, by appealing the case over and over again. Right. And, we're and listen, the fiscal formula as it stands now, Folks in the suburbs, uh, children in, 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 in the schools get about, I don't know, twelve, thirteen thousand mm -hmm. $13,000 per student. Mm -hmm. Folks in upstate New York get around fifteen to $17,000 per student. In the city of New York, as it stands now, our students get maybe between seven and $8,000 per student. So there's a big disparity, a, 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 I mean, a horrible inequity that has to be corrected. But, you know, those folks in other parts of the state don't want to give up what they have. Yeah, but you're turning over your power as a legislative body to back to the I courts. I understand, I understand. You're saying we're incapable of doing and, it and, and, and what happened and gutless and we're going to give it to the courts. Absolutely. And, oh. and, and so what's going to happen, Go though, ahead. what's going to happen is that the folks in the suburbs and in upstate New York will, will, will lose out. Because of the mm -hmm. infighting and the bickering, sure. because those three referees or special masters, mm -hmm. as they call them, um, uh, will just be looking at this situation from a New York City right. point of view. It's really so it, may, it, may, it just took them a little longer to get there, and uh, so that's what's eventually going to happen. Okay, are we going to get? We meaning the city? Are we going to get what we deserve? Oh, we, hope, we, we certainly hope finances? so. We certainly hope so. Okay, uh, uh, and, but you know. Mm -hmm. with, with all of these problems that Albany has, I mean, I guarantee you, it didn't, it happened a little bit this year, but I think in about two or three years, I think the voters are really going to get a, very tired of it, and we may have a big time voter revolt. Well, I mean, in fact, what you be, have begun to see is uh, the, you folks, the Democrats picked up three state Senate right. seats. There's a fourth very important one in Westchester, the Nicholas Spano seat. That's right. It is possible that you could get control of the upper house, but but is, is no that, control, but that, we're whittling it away. Right. It's being whittled away. Right. So you're, what, four seats short? It, of, about, about three or four seats okay. short. And if, if, if the Republicans lose Spano, I mean, that's a real big indictment on how the state Senate has been doing business. But the question is, so you guys, the Democrats, control both houses. You haven't done very well in the Assembly. Are you guys going to screw up in the Senate, too? Well, listen, uh, you know, I'm not the amazing Kreskin. I can't tell the Good. future. Okay. But it would just make things a lot easier, I do believe. Right. If we had a, uh, a Senate majority leader, right. that would really uh, work on And since you have bilateral leader. conflict, if you will, partisan between a governor right. and exactly. the legislature rather exactly. than a three-way battle. Exactly. Let's talk about the Rockefeller drug laws, mm -hmm. which I know you're very interested no in. No question. Pataki and the legislative have been talking about this virtually since be, be, it's been Pataki. about five or six or yeah, seven years right, right. now. It's, it's more than a whole term. Right. And we got nada. Nothing. 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 Zero. Nothing. Why? Listen, if folks don't wake up, this is going to be an issue that will overturn folks that have been obstructionists or against, uh, against the uh, reform of the Rockefeller drug laws. You have to remember, look at Albany County right now. You had a district attorney up there, an incumbent, mm -hmm. who did not want to uh, do any reform to the Rockefeller right. drug laws. A black guy from, from Albany County uh, who was in favor of reforming the Rockefeller drug laws he beat this incumbent. Right. 
only on the Rockefeller drug law whatsoever. I have been, my name is mm. the second name I know. On, on the Rockefeller drug law. It's something that is needed right now. Uh, uh, folks folks on the, from the governor's office, they, 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 they term it, and it's, they've said this on the floor of the legislature, that if we reform the Rockefeller drug law, it would be almost like an organized mass jailbreak. And, 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 and it's, just, it's just a horrible, horrible attitude. They don't want to be perceived as being, as being, I guess, soft on crime. But they recognize that the law is, is inequitous in so many different ways, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but there's a recognition of problem and there's no, there's no common ground to sol for solutions here. What can we expect in the next legislative session? The same deal? I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I just don't know. But okay. certainly we have to do something. But it, it's got to be movement. This Rockefeller drug law uh, movement, if you will, is gaining ground and it's gaining momentum momentum you know i remember the time way back when even when rockefeller passed this law mm -hmm. uh back in the 70s that people only thought the drug situation was part and parcel to to folks in the urban centers sure. and in the city and, minority, and communities. minority communities but this is affecting everyone all across mm -hmm. the state mm -hmm. uh even so in even uh, up in albany as sure. was proven by the last political race so are you sanguine about change here oh no I'm, listen, I am, I am, I am, I am still moving forward. Okay. Listen, I have to make sure that, 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 that some sort of legacy to let people know that I've been here. Okay. That, 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 so that, in that. a sense, this is at the very core of no your agenda as an oh, elected official no, and as a human being. this and a few other things. Absolutely. Okay. This makes sense. Because okay, we, all have, we okay. all have people that have been affected by the drug Okay. Drug Talk drug about drug. these other things that you hold deeply as a legislator. I know the death penalty is one. Oh, yes. Listen, the death penalty, the, the, the governor ran on two issues back in when he first ran in 1994. One was taxes, mm -hmm. the reduction of taxes, and the death penalty. Now, back in 1995, when the death penalty was passed in the legislature and, and signed by the governor, um, uh, you know, they, they, they were applauding it, and I took a very lonely road. I put my bill in to repeal the death penalty. Um, and no one wanted to sign on and, and support it, but I kept introducing that bill year mm -hmm. after year after year. What most of us knew at that point, but the governor didn't seem to know, is that the bill that was passed in the assembly was flawed on its face. Mm -hmm. And and the uh, and uh, subject the, to the legal New York challenge. State, the New York State Court of Appeals, the highest court in the state right. of New York, ruled that it was constitutionally flawed, and that and that technical changes needed to be made. Uh, uh, in order to, uh, I guess, create a valid law. Mm -hmm. So what happens now? Uh, uh, you know, we in the legislature, we haven't done anything. But I'm actually glad for our dysfunction right, right now. Because nobody can be executed under the stay of there the There is no death penalty law in New York so State So here's right where now. gridlock in terms of your policy benefits, benefits works for you. It works. And, and, but not only that, you know, I don't want to be known, especially in this, this last legislative session, that the only thing that we as a legislature is, that we're able to do is to legally kill someone. When we haven't provided um, uh, education, when we haven't done anything to benefit people in health care, mm -hmm. when we haven't done anything to create jobs, I don't want the only thing that we've been known to do is that we've been able to legally kill someone. What else? What other issues are at the top of your oh, personal oh, legislative Well, there, there are a couple of things. Election reform, number one. Election uh, reform. And you've got several pieces of legislation before mm -hmm. the assembly right now. In the year 2000, the, the, uh, uh, the president of, of the United States, George Bush, um, uh, passed something called the Help America Vote Act. Each and every state of the union has to, I guess, revamp and uh, revitalize and just rev totally revolutionize how they vote. Uh, which, which didn't was, happen in the 2004 which did not happen. election, by the <clears throat> Absolutely. Way. Did not happen in the 2000s. And particularly in New York, it was a mess. Absolutely. And I don't, those folks that voted in the last election in November, uh, our, our, those lever voting machines, I mean, those lever voting machines are older than I am. They, <laughs> I, they were around when Mickey Mantle batted clean up. Absolutely. I mean, and they were obsolete then. Absolutely. So, so the Help America Vote Act is supposed to, I mean, we're supposed to get electronic machines. Now, it's... Election reform has been stifled in Albany for a variety of reasons, uh, one because of partisanship, but also because I've been holding out for what we call an electronic, uh, excuse me, a verifiable voter paper yeah. trail, almost like a receipt. Right. What, what you have to remember is that these electronic machines, that if we, if, we, if we are not up and running by the year 2006, we will lose 
at least $250 million. However, I've been holding out mm -hmm. so that we could have a verifiable voter paper trail. What you have to remember, these, these voting machines, these new voting machines, are nothing but computers. Computers can be compromised, yep. manipulated. I vote on a computer, an electronic voting mm -hmm. in, in the county that I live in, New mm -hmm. Jersey, mm -hmm. and it is very easy to vote, but sure. as you say, there's no paper trail. But I've seen that there are systems available that use almost like ATM technology where you can actually see your receipt, you can see your receipt. falling down and, and, and in that's, the tube. And that's what we're holding out for. Is you it going to happen? I think it will, but 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 it's, it's not going to be a quick road. You have to look at California. Uh, California, I guess, spent over, in the largest state of the union, spent over $300 million on, on totally redoing how they vote. Uh, and then a Democratic attorney general comes in and sees that several elections were compromised. Uh, and, and what does he do? He decertifies all the machines in California. Now, I'm sure that Schwarzenegger election uh, was part and parcel to some of this uh, Ooh, compromising this. activity. That's right. That's right. A Democratic attorney general decertifies. So that's, I mean, it becomes a tremendous waste of money. Absolutely. And so I'd, I'd rather be uh, penny wise than pound foolish Absolutely. as the election law chair Absolutely. in the state of New York. Absolutely. So, and, and that's what we're grappling with. Okay. One of, one of the more enjoyable pieces I've read over the last week was uh, here we go again doing the MTA shuffle by Assemblyman Keith Wright that appeared in the Amsterdam News. What's the MTA shuffle? It's not a dance. Oh, we can't do the dance here, can we? No, no, and I'd rather not. I don't think your viewers want to see me okay. dance. But me certainly, yeah, certainly. Uh, the MTA has been going back and forth. I mean, for years, every year, they seem to need a fair increase in order to deliver services. They have to. They have major capital program. But the folks that actually ride the subways, I mean, the, the two or three million folks that ride the subways and, and buses each and every day, have never reaped any of the benefits. What really gets me angry about the, the MTA and what they're doing is that they want to close token booths. In this time of terrorism, in this time of security, right. our t people... And in time where crime rates are generally low, and why crime give rates people, are low the, the, right. That's people right. the opportunity right. to Why do raise? we have to open the okay. Pandora's okay. box okay. again? Okay. There's no reason. Uh, they want to close I mean, token booths. But I think actually the mayor and, and, and a lot of folks in the city of New York have said you need to cut some of the bloated fat right. that is actually in the bureaucracy. Right. I used to work for the MTA. Now, you have to remember is that these folks, these folks, I mean, their, their salaries are getting paid each and every day. They're a necessary evil, if you will. Money is coming in each and every day. So they, they, their salaries are fine. Uh, uh, and, and if you cut, there's a lot of fat at that MTA, a lot of fat that can be cut, and they can still, still uh, run. You said it sounds like your experience with the MTA isn't what, what you would call one of your more positive oh, no. professional as I, as I adult experiences. Oh, no, no, absolutely. As I told you in, 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 the, in the waiting room before, I hated the job so much I had to run for office. Uh, uh, and what do you... What, the politics that permeates in the MTA, is, it, it, it makes Albany politics look like romper room, if oh, you will. God. Um, um, I've never seen a, a more politically cutthroat um, uh, organization as the MTA that I've ever seen. Listen, it was proven. Uh, I think it was controller Alan Hevesy or, or maybe Richard Brodsky that talked about how it, it was unearthed that the MTA has not one but two separate sets of books. Hevesy, yeah. Hev was it Hev Alan Hevesy? Yeah. That has not one but two separate sets of books, one public, one private. Is there any hope? Um, sure, there, there is hope. Uh, 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 I, you know, I always have hope. I'm an optimist by nature. Um, uh, certainly, I mean, we, we want to keep these, listen, I passed a bill in the state senate and in the state assembly to keep token booths open. No, I know, the I read the legislation. vetoed, vetoed this legislation. Why? I mean, it just escapes me. Okay. So we've got all these problems. We've got these authorities. These, these authorities are a huge they're, problem. They're, they're entities in and of themselves. Is there any prospect that the, the tens, if not hundreds of billions of dollars, both in expenditures and in debt of these authorities can come under control of someone who's responsible. I don't know if I want the legislature to do it, but the legislature would be an appropriate place. Yeah, what, what you're finding now is that the authorities were these entities in and of themselves right. that really came under absolutely no scrutiny whatsoever. Uh, and I think... And they were supposed to not have scrutiny. It, right, exactly. But as of right now, I think you're finding that the scrutiny is now... Um, uh, starting to come into the forefront. And I think it's actually good and it's responsible 
especially for people in the state of New York. I mean, we have authorities that nobody knows what they do, Right. number and one, and that they, they have millions and millions and millions of dollars, and that they're, they're virtually answerable to no one. Not, if not the last question, one of the last questions, your political future. You're an assemblyman. You've been serving since 1991. Mm -hmm. Where do you go from here? What do you do where you are? Your future. Well, you know, I still consider myself somewhat energetic and, and, and I hope uh, very vital. Uh, and, and, and I consider myself a good legislator. Um, I'm looking uh, at, right now, looking at running for Manhattan Borough President. Okay. I'm looking to run for Manhattan Borough President. My first job in politics was for a Borough President. And certainly... Uh, you, Which Borough President? Uh, David Dinkins. Ah. And we've had some great Borough Presidents right. uh, coming from Manhattan, coming from my little piece of the world in Uptown. We've had Percy Sutton. Uh, right. We've had um, uh, Constance Baker Motley. Right. Uh, we've some had historic some, figures. Some historic figures. Yeah. Uh, uh, Virginia Fields, who is term limited uh, right now. So I'm looking to fulfill that seat. There are, what, a baker's dozen of people running for that seat? It's how at least you, a dozen. How do you win that seat? Well, I think it's, uh, you know, because you have a lot of people running, all of whom are known in their little mm -hmm. pieces of the world. Right. And I don't think anyone polls uh, badly. Mm -hmm. I think it's important that the person, well, the, in order to win that seat, to answer your question, I think a person has to hold their own in their little piece of the mm -hmm. world and, and certainly become a second or third choice uh, somewhere else. Right, okay. Um, and I don't think any political pundit right now can, can, can say, can forecast who the winner will no. be. But uh, very quickly, your agenda is borough president. Oh, certainly uh, job creation and affordable housing. Okay. Uh, affordable housing in Manhattan at this point is almost uh, non-existent. Yeah, okay. And uh, affordable housing is something that's very, very important. To, to folks if people want to still be able to live in Manhattan. But we'll have to talk about more about this. As a matter of fact, I, I invite you back at the sort of the end of the budget cycle to see if I'd anything love, has changed. I would love, Sir, it's a pleasure. love to come back. Thank you.